Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Tinubu has confirmed his intention to contest the office of the president in 2023. Tinubu has also disclosed this, that he has informed President Muhammad Buhari about his presidential ambition. He disclosed this to State House correspondents on Monday after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja. According to him, contesting the presidency is his lifelong ambition. I can answer that to categorical yes. I've informed the president of my intention, but I've not informed the Nigerians yet. I'm still consulting. And uh, I have no problem consulting, and I've not set a parameter of uh, limitation to the extent of uh, how many people will I con consult. You will soon hear, all you want to hear is a categorical declaration. You've gotten that truth from me that I've informed the pre uh, Mr. President of my ambition. And you don't expect more answers than that. Uh, first of all, the National Assembly and the President must be encouraged to review and they review again. Whatever they come up with electoral amendment is what we will must comply with. There's no uh, unlimited elasticity in what we face because we have to plan and plan well and be able to uh, manage the time effectively. This, the great roadmap to success is ability of a leader to do what he must do at the right time that it should be done. So that, to me, the electoral amendment uh, point, we will still look at that collectively, and it is our country, it's our democracy. We had we had adopted it, and we will pursue it. No, rigorously. About uh, the cap of a uh, kingmaker, I've never seen the cap of a kingmaker before. Oh, no. that, that, that is the truth. Uh, and I've never seen where it is written in the rule book anywhere in any country that a kingmaker cannot be a king unless you commit murder. So, whatever you, is your attribute, is your own opinion. Me, I want to pursue my ambition without the title of a kingmaker. You can write your literature and your story based upon your own perception. Well, joining us live is political analyst Biodo Shomi as we break down this particular story. Thank you very much, Mr. Shomi, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Well, this, is, this doesn't necessarily come as a surprise to many as speculations had been rife on his ambition uh, to run for the presidency ticket on the platform of the All Progressive Congress. But what are your thoughts? Well, we still don't have a categorical declaration um, from um, Ashwa Yubola Ahmed Tinubu. He has only let us into his thinking that he's busy consulting uh, within the context of the law. And what is he actually referring to? Um, my view is that, uh, one, we have an electoral act which has its own restrictions on when you can declare that you are a candidate or not. He hinted at that by saying that within the limitations of the law, um, which is the current electoral act, I made the reference to the amendment when passed, then that could be examined to see um, whether those limitations are new or they're there, or what are the new conditionalities in the electoral. Mm. So that is the one point why it's limited to declare his candidacy. It could only go to the point or to the extent of saying, look, I'm consulting, I've informed Mr. President of my ambition, 
that is not a violation of the Electoral Act as it stands for them. Then he further went ahead to um, to, to try and um, explain his own perception of the issue of King Lagos. Uh, quite a lot of political pundits uh, actually pitched their heads that you know, we will end up becoming another kingmaker this time around, um, rather than being bidding for the crown himself. You know, there are so many speculations about who he would endorse or not endorse. But now we now know that um, he's not thinking of being a kingmaker any longer. And he explained the fact that there is no constitutional inhibition from a kingmaker or no kingmaker from bidding for the truth, you know, to, uh, to be crowned. So basically what he's saying is that irrespective of the role he has played in the past, there is no inhibition uh, legally wise, you know, to his uh, future aspiration, you know, which is to be a candidate in the next election for the presidency. Mm. So I think it's been very, very clear enough. People already know his mind. Um, we can understand is now his um, psychological construct his personal construct, his makeup, and where it's going, his direction, is led us into that thinking without violating the electoral, you know, act as it stands today. Mm. Um, when I upload this, so that's so far what I think he has done. Let's go on to the support that he might be um, receiving um, now that he has somewhat hinted that he might be interested in the revered seat of the president. Um, we also know that we had seen billboards uh, uh, surface in the FCT of the vice president, also seemingly um, looking like he's also throwing his hat into the ring here. Will there be, do you see a split in supports within the um, party and, of course, in the Southwest, being that these two come from the same extraction? Yeah, well, I think um, Tinumbu's. Uh, um, announcement or is um, letting us into his thinking current is with a bid to put a stop to some of the debt moves being made by supporters or um, how would I call it uh, enablers of um, different um, one or two different candidates in the South who have pinned their hope on the fact that maybe Tinumbu will resign to be a kingmaker and therefore open the way for them. And their supporters have been busy campaigning, creating billboards and all that um, everywhere, both on social media, physically, you know, in the state capital of Abuja. Now, uh, what he has done with that announcement is uh, he's going to have to call for um, uh, retrospection. Many, two, at least one or two of those top leading candidates will have to think whether they can afford to take on uh, Tinubu in the South for the for the popular votes, one and two, whether they can afford to take on Tinubu within the political party APC itself, uh, knowing that um, he will enjoy the support of uh, many of the ACN faction that came into APC, and possibly he has considerable um, uh, measure of support also in the North, um, which within the the Northern APC caucus. Um, Yes, which will go in his favor. That notwithstanding, it does not mean that it doesn't have uh, people who are averse to his um, candidates. Yes, they are within the party. Yes, they are within the country. Uh, but he's determined um, to contest. He's mm. been encouraged by the level of support uh, he's getting from the consultation. Interesting. Um, you you you, uh, you answered almost everything um, uh, in my next question um, because I was going to ask how formidable a candidate he would be, not just because you know in the southwest he seems to be not just a kingmaker, he seems to be the leader of the party. But one would wonder um, how well he will fare in the south south and the southeast and of course the north. You have said he might have some fraction of support in the north, but. Can that be said of him in the southwest? Uh, sorry, in the south south and the southeast, knowing that there's an agitation of sorts coming from not just the southeast but even the south south. Yeah, prior to two years ago, I would have been one of those who would say that there'll be a measure, considerable measure of um, rejection or opposition to Tinubu's candidacy 
in the South South and the South East. What we have seen so far is that, given the political realities uh, currently, the division in the country, along the even amongst the governors along the South and North fault lines, um, we are in a situation where the South is probably going to look at who is best placed, you know, to uh, win the election, uh, who is a certain candidate and who is uh, not best, best placed. From all those indicating their interests so far, there is no doubt in my mind that Tinubu has the farthest reach when you talk within the South um, in terms of uh, uh, crossing the North you know, barrier. Uh, yes, he might not um, enjoy popular support in the South East, South South. Well, he enjoys some support in the South East, South South because you still have the APC as a political party. In those states, the fact of the matter is um, the South has resolved that a candidate from the South you know, should be the next president. So if Tinumbu wins the APC ticket, it is possible another Southern candidate uh, will win the PDP ticket. It is possible, not impossible. Um, so if, should that happen, then you are likely going to have a, a, a Southwest candidate against maybe South East South, South candidate uh, through the PDP. If that happens, the North, you know, would uh, are made well to determine what happens in that election. But in the unlikely event that the, well, in the likely event that PDP, you know, offers the ticket to a North America, which I will understand why if they choose to do that, because it's with a view to create a sharp contradiction and see whether they can get majority of the votes from the North to back their own candidate hoping to slice into South East and South South. In the event of that happening, then it will be a, sh a straightforward battle between um, an APC, if Tinubu eventually declares and gets the ticket, between Tinubu and whoever is a Northern candidate you know, of um, PDP. So that will be a very interesting development. I think it promises um, um, a lot, you know, in terms of campaigning, in terms of the issues of... Um, uh, the national question in terms of how they will handle security. Well, it will be very interesting to listen to them. At least we'll have okay. a proper debate, you know, this time around, and people will understand what the issues are and their policies and the positions of whoever they are elected. Well, uh, Biola Shomi is a political analyst. We thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.